Hello and welcome to Beyond Today, the program that addresses the future of our community through conversations with people who are working today for a better tomorrow. I'm Ray Charmonte, your host for Beyond Today and Assistant Executive Director for the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission. In our last program, we talked about providing and achieving a safe environment. We'll be talking today with our guests about strengthening families and social services. Our guests are Kim Sheeler, President and Chief Professional Officer of the United Way of Hillsborough County, Inc., and Tony Watts, Director of Finance Operations of the CDC of Tampa, that is, the Corporation to Develop Communities of Tampa, Inc., which was formerly the Lee Davis Neighborhood Development Corporation. Welcome to Beyond Today. In the vision for Hillsborough County, we see a time when families are empowered to regain control of their lives, when those who truly need the support of public services find them available in user-friendly neighborhood settings, when the quality of life for our citizens is a source of pride and strength for our community. I would like to ask you, Kim and Tony, both, um, one at a time, of course, <laughs> uh, the United Way, what is that organization? We hear a lot about it, but I'm not sure that people are really familiar with what you do. Most people, when you talk about United Way, initially think it's an organization that raises money and gives it out to agencies in the community, which is the basis of what we do. But our mission really is to help people invest their resources where they can have the greatest impact in meeting the health and human service needs in our community, and especially in meeting the identified and the most urgent health and human service needs in our community. So it's not just money, but it's also time and talent, resources of those natures that we can use to put into the agencies in the community that help people. We raise about $12 million a year and invest that in 50 different agencies across the Hillsborough County area to try and have an impact, a positive impact on the lives of people in Hillsborough County. So your agency, I guess, is somewhat of a coordinating agency for a lot of other organizations. Absolutely. And one of the key roles that we provide with those organizations is not only the coordination, but also accountability in how they spend the money that we give to them. Because we have a group of volunteers, about 150 volunteers, that follow up with those agencies throughout the year and make sure that they're putting the money into the community in a way that is the most efficient and the most effective way to provide those resources. Tony, the Lee Davis Center ha has a good reputation, but uh, you have a name change now, and uh, I wondered what, what is your agency doing differently now, or what are the responsibilities of your agency? Well, the, the Corporation to Develop Communities of Tampa, CDC of Tampa for short, um, was developed in 1992. It's a 501c3 nonprofit um, organization that developed to revitalize the community in the area of East Tampa. It initially started uh, by a group of concerned citizens that was called the Lee Davis Neighborhood, Lee Davis Neighborhood Advisory Board, um, who was concerned about uh, alleviating poverty and created economic opportunities uh, in the area of East Tampa. Some of the things that we've done is that we were initially in um, the social services arena, and now we have moved out into commercial revitalization to add, um, introducing small business ventures into the area of East Tampa. We're operating on, well, we're targeting an area called Lake and 29th, which is one of the worst corners in East uh, Hillsborough County, to try and revitalize that area and, and attract, hopefully, uh, new business ventures to come into the area. What we think is that if, we'll, if you can change the face of the community um, and you can empower the people to come in and join you to help restructure the community, that once they see a difference coming in uh, with new businesses, creating new jobs, that it'll also change their mindset and uplift the, the community um, value economically. Now, y the CDC is located where? Um, CDC of Tampa is located at 2705 East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We were initially housed in the Lee Davis Neighborhood Service Center on 22nd Street. Um, we moved into moved on Martin Luther King on March of 1995. Uh, that is um, between 29th Street and 26th Street. Okay, so you have a new office and you are, yes. are separated. Uh, yes, we are, and, and they're located at the office. We also have a fully operational uh, job placement training center. We were in partnership with the Florida Department of Labor, um, and I was very successful in having them to bring down um, machines that they have on Bush, on, on Bush Avenue, what they call GIST machines, uh, which allows us to bring into the community um, 
an opportunity to go and look for jobs throughout uh, Hillsborough County, the state of Florida, and even um, throughout the country via the, the computerized network. One of the other things while we're talking about what we do, is, um, what we do significantly, um, significantly is based on a needs assessment when the agency first started in 92. We did a needs assessment of East um, Hillsboro. Uh, we covered the zip code areas 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10. And we asked the community what it was that they thought that they wanted. Uh, first of all, we did a profile. We found out the profile was about $5,000 a year annually. Um, AFDC recipients, about 80% single female headed households. Um, and we thought that maybe uh, with that outcome, what they would be looking for would be more social services, um, more, more services to help out. But out of that, they gave, we, the feedback was 26 needs. The top three was affordable housing, affordable daycare, and job training and placement. Based on that, the CDC pulled out job training and placement, uh, and we went to work on that. The board of directors is 51% residents of the community um, and other uh, business people. Um, and then our staff, excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> first time on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my CEO normally does this, and she's excellent yeah, at you're it. You're doing fine. Okay. You're getting a lot of good information. So um, what happened was that by us doing that, we pulled out job training and placement, and we started to work on that because we felt as though it, what um, the community had actually said to us was that if you give me a job or give me some training, then the rest of it I can do it for myself. Okay, so we de we developed a relationship with the Florida Department of Labor, and they they did come together with us and provide um, the machines inside of the community. Um, at before then, the closest location to go and apply, seek and apply for a job was on Bush, which is probably I guess about five miles away. And when you're dealing with um, low-income communities, sometimes that can be a that can be a barrier because mm -hmm. of transportation. And since we opened the doors in '95, we serviced. Um, we service probably close to 200 people a month. Uh, we place about 50 people on jobs um, per month. And then what we've done is stretch that out, the economic development arm, which um, goes on, like I said, down to the 29th Street Business District. And with the help of uh, public-private partnerships like the United Way, the City of Tampa, CDBG funds, we're going to uh, stitch together a, um, a business venture to redevelop Re rehabilitate a laundromat that's been closed down for about five to ten years. It sits on the corner of Lake and 29th. And if anybody's, if, if you've ever been there, you know, it's like another little, to me, it's like another little third world country on Lake and 29th. You really have to go back there to see what it is. Mm -hmm. Back there, we want to create jobs and uh, attract new businesses well, to come to the area. that sounds like a laudable goal. It certainly fits in with long-range planning. Yes. Uh, Kim, you, you deal with a lot of different agencies. What, what are the big ones that uh, are part of United Way? Obviously, the ones that first come to mind are things like the YMCA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Boys and Girls Clubs, agencies like mm -hmm. that that people know and have seen around the community for a number of years. And then I guess we would have more obscure ones that we might not be that familiar with. Some of the ones that are more obscure are the ones like the CDC, which is one right. of our new agencies right. um, doing a wonderful job in the community. We've got agencies all the way out into uh, the far reaches of East Hillsboro, like Steppenstone Farm, which is an agency that deals with young women that are having problems in their family, and it puts them in a long-range environment where changes their behavior, gets them to, uh, to value the family again and go back into their family environment to change person. So. Where do most of your donations to keep the United Way going come from? The majority of our money comes from people in the workplace. Um, a lot of people think that the United Way is the corporate thing in the community, but only about 20 percent of the money that we raise actually comes from corporate contributions. The majority of the money, 75 percent of it, comes from people in the workplace that sign a payroll deduction card during the campaign time and have that money taken out of their paycheck through the course of the year. Have you seen any trends in, in 
that type of giving? Are we on the upswing, downswing? How, how is that working out? Obviously that's become challenging for us as the business environment has changed in the community. It used to be there were a, a small number of very large corporations. It was easy for us to go in and raise money in those because we had two or three thousand people in one place. As we've seen the environment change and there are more smaller businesses, it becomes much more challenging for us to get out and much more costly for us to go out mm -hmm. and try and raise money in those smaller businesses. So. It is a challenge and it has changed, but we've continued to see good growth in the United mm -hmm. Way in this community. And so it has been growing then? Absolutely. You, there's something interesting that you said that I probably wasn't aware of. You, you said there's more small businesses now and not as many large corporations? Or is there just more businesses generally? The bigger companies have gotten smaller, as, as we all see over the years. Probably the past 10 years, a lot of the major companies have become smaller. Or the other thing that's happened in a community like Tampa is we have fewer headquarter companies here now. The companies have been bought by someone that's headquartered in another community, and that changes the, the matrix of how the money is spent mm -hmm. in the community and kind of the, the responsibility that people feel for the community. I guess a visible example that might be our banks, which used to be Absolutely. more locally owned, and now you notice banks really that are headquartered in other cities. So that, that affects corporate giving then to an agency. Without question, you know, it way. has an impact, and it has an impact on the size of the organization because mm -hmm. obviously when those banks acquire other banks, they do it so that they can realize some economies of scale in mm -hmm. their operations. So they centralize some of the operations, which reduces the number of people in our community. Mm -hmm. The upside of that is we end up with an organization that by nature of its size is much stronger and much more viable into the future. So we have an organization that's going to be around for a long time and provides a lot of support. Because it's tied in, I guess, to more local companies. Absolutely. But I guess a lesson might be we want, want a goal to uh, attract more corporate headquarters. That seems to Absolutely. be an important part of, Absolutely. Uh, of charitable giving. Yep. Th that's an interesting analysis. I'm sure a lot of people haven't thought about that. Um, what's the number one problem facing the CDC right now? I know you talked a little bit about revitalization. Um, is that your biggest effort at this point? Well, uh, yes it is. I, I, uh, one of the other things is um, now with the wages program uh, that has uh, started uh, in the state of Florida, uh, bringing uh, welfare, the welfare to work and helping people, well, not actually uh, helping people, but now that the clock started ticking in October of 1996, a lot of uh, participants that are on AFDC are gonna be f going to be forced to have to go to work now. So that's one of our biggest challenges. Um, it, that's going to be our biggest challenge right now is helping people to find employment, but also fly, find a livable wage, a sustainable employment. I, we're going to touch upon that. Uh, in fact, we're going to take a break now. When we return, we're going to talk more about strengthening families, and we're also going to talk about welfare reform. Thank you. Planning is in your future, for your future, your children's, and your grandchildren's. In the year 2015, how old will your children be? We need to know what you want for your future. Do you want clean water, clean air, trees, shade, and sidewalks? Do you want to preserve your community's history, to expand the interstate, or do you want high-speed rail? These are decisions that the planners want you to make. How can you be involved in comprehensive planning? Keep informed. Watch your local government in action on Hillsboro Television or attend public meetings. Take five minutes to email the Planning Commission on issues that emerge in your community. Volunteer for citizens' committees or get your community group involved. Learn more on the Planning Commission's homepage. You can do this at your local library if you don't have access to the Internet. Keep abreast of community issues by reading your community newspaper and letting the Planning Commission know how you feel. Contact us by letter, email, or give us a call. Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission, 601 East Kennedy Boulevard, 18th Floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Call 272-5940 or fax 272-6258. Welcome back to Beyond Today. I'm your host, Ray Charmonti, and we've been discussing strengthening families and social services. I'm here again with Kim Sheeler of the United Way of Hillsborough County, Inc., and Tony Watts of the CDC of Tampa. We talked, uh, touched upon welfare reform before the break. I wanted to get a little bit more into that because this is a subject we hear a lot about and it seems like there's not answers to exactly what that is. Uh, Kim, what are your thoughts on where we are with this welfare reform? 
Welfare reform is, is a very complex subject, as you heard Tony mention before we went off for the break. There are a lot of elements involved in that, and it's not just a simple matter of telling people that are on welfare on such and such a date you will no longer receive that support and you're going to have to go find a job, because we're talking about changing sometimes history, generations of people living off of welfare, and that's not what welfare was intended to do, but that's what it's evolved into. And trying to remedy that is going to take a, a lot of work and a lot of time on the part of many people in this community and across the country to try and find some solutions. The clock is ticking now, and, and the state has decided that within two years, everybody that's on welfare is going to have to find a job. They will not be able to, to receive subsidies after that two-year period. That means not only trying to do training to, to develop the skills those people need, but in many cases, it's, it's really changing their very nature of how they go about their life and helping them to learn and to understand what it means to have a job. And that's one of the things that the CDC does very well and has spent a lot of time with is trying to change that mindset and help people understand why it's important to get up and go to work every day, what's expected of you while you're there, and what your responsibilities are, and to provide some incentive and help them see the long-term incentive. Because in many cases, coming off welfare, going into a minimum wage job, if we're lucky, it's an even break. Sometimes it's a drop in terms of real income for that family. So what's the incentive there to, to get someone to make that transition or to make that move? And if, I, yeah. if I might add to that also, um, one of the other obstacles is that you, have fam you may have um, generations of family who have been on the welfare system. And like um, we all know, you, you probably are not in the same job that you started on. So we um, promote a p program called Stepping Stones that really helps them to develop a mindset of being ready to go to work. And then after they're ready to go to work and get there, then that their technical expertise can be taught to them once they're there. Now your agency, I, I guess, is going to be involved in some of these issues. Uh, what programs do you have to help people? You mentioned Stepping Stone. Are there other programs that are going to help with this transition to welfare reform? Well, there's, there's, a, um, there's other nonprofits out there that are doing, uh, and other agencies that are doing similar work. Uh, you have Brewster Technical Center, um, Tampa Hillsborough Action P uh, Plan, and Tampa Hillsborough Urban League. So we, we collaborate with a lot of different agencies to get the job done. But our niche is that we like we work with people who have uh, little or no work experience, and we um, develop in them, or attempt to develop in them, a work ethic. Uh, and give to them that stepping stone that they're going to need, that motivation to go into a job and say that this may not be where I'm going to be in 20 years, but at least I'm going to start right here and I'm going to follow what it takes to get me down a career path. What we offer employers, that's the one thing. That, the other thing, the other part of that is that we develop employer partners. We actually like to go out and talk with employees and let them know who our client is, who our customer is, if you will you know, to let them know where they're coming from. And we offer a follow-up, a 90 to 180-day 180 uh, 180 follow-up, where we're developing a work relationship. Because like Kim said, a lot of this has to do with generations of dependency. And you get down to the third or fourth generation, uh, there may not be a family support there. Mm -hmm. So as, a, uh, as an agency uh, committed to helping revitalize the community, we offer support to actually go out and talk to the people on the job, talk to the employees to let them know that they are not just left alone with this person um, that came on the job. But what we, what we do try to develop is a livable wage, uh, like Kim was saying. A lot of times the, the, the um, support that they're receiving initially, if you look at it as, as, as you think of your budget, um, once you step into the workforce, well, the, assist, the support kind of dwindles away, and that uh, causes a lot of people to go back to the system of dependency. I'd like to go back to something you said, and this is, since we're talking about strengthening families, you talked about developing a work ethic. I guess even as a parent, I, I'd have to ask you, how, how do you do that? <laughs> give, me, give me some pointers on this. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I think it's just, um, we were talking earlier before the show about uh, how in your family you probably were told at some point in time, even though you might, it might not have been just pointed out to you, that you were going to be more than your parents. You probably um, watch your parents work 
every day. Um, go to work, sick sometimes, uh, not sick, take a vacation. And it just developed and instilled in you that this is something that you were going to do. You were going to be doing something. Uh, a lot of families that are on uh, assistance, aid to uh, families with dependent children, have seen grandmothers on the system and mother on the system. And now you're down into a third generation who's developing the fourth generation and they've all done that being assisted mm -hmm. by the government so there's no work ethic involved. Well that that gives me some hope then so I guess example mm -hmm. is important so we all need to set examples right. for each other right. to follow. That's a good point. Absolutely. Kim do you see direct effects to other agencies besides the CDC that United Way is involved with? <clears throat> One of the things we're in the process of doing right now is is putting together sort of a summary of how our agencies are going to be impacted by and how our agencies can impact welfare reform. I just had a meeting this morning with uh, my board chair Alex Sink who's the head of Nations Bank and she wants to start on an ongoing basis with the board talking about these issues and, and bringing forth examples of how our agencies are going to be involved in the welfare reform change. So yeah, because it is so complex, I mean, we start dealing with things like daycare, we start dealing with things like the job training stuff, the, the education, trying to instill the work ethic, all of those things are things that our agencies are very involved with. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges when you have programs, for instance, like a Big Brothers and Big Sisters that provides mentoring for kids, one of the challenges in that process is also educating the kids that the way that it's happening for them is not the normal way that it should happen so that when they grow up they don't do the same thing with their children. One of the dangers is you have a, a youngster who participates in a program they grow up thinking that when they have children they just ship them off to the boys and girls clubs every afternoon and that takes care of their responsibilities. So it's, it's not only providing the service but providing the education along with it. And those are some of the things that are going to change dramatically because of the welfare reform. So it's kind of instilling personal responsibility. Absolutely. Ba back into the family. It's going to be which critical. I think it's important. You mentioned something that you said the state, um, I guess the program is that in two years you're no longer on welfare. When you refer to the state, do you mean the state of Florida or the federal government? The state of Florida has adopted that. And, and by jumping out ahead and being one of the earliest states to sort of put the stake in the sand of what they want welfare reform to be, they've received significant money from the federal government because the federal government basically said the states that get out ahead of the curve, we will provide some incentive for them to do that. So, the, Now yeah. is this something that Florida is out ahead of the curve on? Very much so. So how many other states have taken this step? I don't remember the exact number. I believe it was somewhere around five or six, but I'm not sure. Um, so we are definitely on the front end of the curve. Well, I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but it's interesting <laughs> to hear that we're yeah. on the front line of, of a new trend that's Absolutely. going on. Um, you talked about the revitalization of East Tampa. I, I guess uh, from our viewers' perspective, East Tampa would be where from generally the street areas that you would define? Uh, well, the boundaries start at uh, North Boulevard um, to Orient Road kind of huge, okay. and then from Sly Avenue to 7th Avenue. One of the reasons I might add that we changed our name uh, to Corporation to Develop Communities of Tampa was so that we could enlarge our vision to the whole of Tampa and all of East um, Hillsborough County. But we primarily focused on East Tampa because that's where we were birthed out mm -hmm. of and where we're located. Right so you've now. expanded your boundaries a little. Yes. Uh, Tony, you talked about vision and that brings to my mind something else. Um, Kim, you're involved in something called Hillsborough Tomorrow, which I know we at the Planning Commission are kind of excited about. Uh, we, we did a vision, and this program has been about some of our visions, and we feel like this is kind of the beginning of the implementation uh, of that. Can you tell us about Hillsborough Tomorrow and where that's going? Absolutely. Hillsborough Tomorrow is a very exciting effort, and it's a, a grassroots effort to try and involve people across the community in building the vision and, and buying into the vision for the community. One of the challenges that you face in a community of this size is that if the leadership comes up with a vision and puts it out to the people and they don't accept it, then you're going to have a lot of people who become naysayers and they say that won't work. And, and because they're a naysayer, they're not participating in trying to help make it work. What Hillsboro Tomorrow is all about is bringing together groups of people so they can provide input 
into what they think the needs in the community are and what they think the most important things are for us to accomplish. We're going to see obviously different opinions from different parts of the community and the challenge in a collaborative effort of this nature is to not get frustrated with what you hear and to not get frustrated with the apparent uh, dynamics of this group wanting one thing and somebody else wanting something that's diametrically opposed to it, but trying to work out solutions that everybody can participate in and buy into. And if we can make that happen, then we have something that the entire community is willing to work towards. When we talk about issues like welfare reform, we're talking about moving from treating symptoms to preventive programs. And you can't make that kind of a move without some people having to endure some hardship because of it, because the reality is there is not enough money out there to do all the things we need to do in our community. So we've got to set priorities. We've got to establish what we want to try and accomplish. And without su the support of the people in the community to make that happen, it will never become a reality. When did the Hillsborough Tamar effort start, and where is it going? What are the characteristics? The, uh, the real idea for it started two and a half years ago when Bill McBride was the chair of the board of the United Way actually and he had a meeting with a group of volunteers from all of the United Way agencies to talk about the human service issues in the community. When those people all came together they started to discuss the issues and said what we really need is a way to get everybody on the same page in this community because we've gotten big enough that we've started to become fractured. Uh, Bill then moved out of his role as chair of the board of the United Way, but he was so moved by that idea that he personally took on the challenge of trying to figure out a way to make this happen. So for two and a half years, he's gone through the process of finding people in the community that have been involved. I know you've participated in some of that from the Planning Commission and, and bringing them in and saying, you tell us how you can help us make this happen. And the group has now grown and, and gotten much bigger. The first meeting that the group had, the summit meeting, which was several months ago, had 600 people from across the community participating. Now, 600 out of almost 900,000 people is a drop in the bucket, but it's a good start. And it shows that the people in this community are interested and do want to participate. We're now in the process of trying to formulate some basic goals and objectives out of the Hillsborough Tomorrow group and then the next step will be getting those out into the community to really get the feedback and the input from the people in the community because there are so many folks that won't attend a meeting but if you ask them they'll tell you what they think. I was going to ask you how can we get some more people involved or what's the next step where citizens that haven't been involved and now they're aware of this can get involved? One of the, the first things is, is anybody that would like to have a meeting to let people talk about this needs to just contact the Hillsborough Tomorrow folks and tell them that they would be interested in it and the easiest way to do that is to call the Holland and Knight law firm and ask for Ruth Bentley and Ruth will be glad to, to hook them up. You don't up. happen to know that? I number. don't know the number okay. off the top of my Holland head. I wish I did. But they will be able to, Ruth will be able to point them in the right direction. But one of the things we're going to be looking for are ways to pull groups of people together to provide input. So we're going to need folks that are out there in the community already, in addition to the 600 people that came and showed some interest in this, and trying to find ways to get to groups of people, whether it's 10 or 15 people or whether it's several hundred people at a time, uh, to, to have them have an opportunity to provide some input. Well, I, thi I think that's a call for everybody to get involved Absolutely. in these issues. I'd like to thank today's guests for talking with us about another of our community's visions, strengthening families and social services. Next month, we will talk about fostering a sense of place. I'm Ray Charmonti, and on behalf of the Planning Commission, I thank you for thinking beyond today. Mm -hmm.